Hello YouTube! Once again, as you know, it is me, Toy Adventures. I'm here again with another review. Today, guys, I already told you guys about this, um, that we had this review planned. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I do have a movie filmed before you guys get all mad. I do have a movie filmed, it's dropping this Friday, and you guys are going to love it. It is 28 minutes long, and 4K, it's, I, I'm having a ton of fun making it. Uh, I can't wait to release this one. Usually, movies are kind of like iffy with me. It's like, okay, I hope people will like this one. I know you guys are going to like this one. It's going to be awesome. And trust me, guys, it's going to be worth the wait. So, getting that out of the way, let's get on to today's review. Today, from all the way from Japan. Once again, arigato to Japan, Japanese Amazon for today's review. Today, we are taking a look at the new Savage Strike Wave. We have Sticky Mullet. Velociraptor, which one is this? Echo. Couldn't read because of course it's in Japanese. Postasuchus, which we've already reviewed. The Styracosaurus. Man, we need to come out with this shot. And then finally. Rudosaurus. And uh, the box also had another Echo. So when you buy the full wave, you get one Sticky Moloch, two Echoes, one Postosuchus, a Scrotosaurus, and a new Styracosaurus. This is Echo, right? I, I always forget. Okay, so, like I said in the last video, these are from Amazon Japan, so they are all the Japanese variants. Now, there's no variant. Toy-wise, it's all in the packaging, and really, for the most part, it's just a sticker. Uh, sticker put on the back for the, uh, you know, warnings and whatnot, and for the name, and for the uh, name right here. Uh, it has these three, which are the Camp Cretaceous, and then these three, which are the Primal Attack line. So uh, it's kind of interesting that these crates have two different, essentially, waves of toys in them. Um, not really something you see commonly in the toy world, so I guess that's notable. But yeah, I mean, we, we don't really need to have this guy. I mean, this is going to stay in the box along with this one. I'm not going to open this because I already have a review on it. You guys can check it out. And I wanted to keep this one in the box, um, you know, just as a, you know, Japanese variant. I thought it'd be cool. So this one's not really going to be reviewed. So we can get rid of this one as well, leaving it with what actually is going to be reviewed today, which is one Sticky Moloch, Echo, Scrotosaurus, and uh, Sticky and Styracosaurus. Now, I always pronounce these names. it's Scotosaurus. <laughs> okay, it's Scotosaurus. So those of you that were annoyed that I was pronouncing it wrong in the beginning, you can calm down now. I'll call it Scotosaurus or Scootosaurus. Scotosaurus, Scootosaurus, Scooterosaurus. I don't care, it's that guy. So, uh, not really much going on packaging wise. Taking a look at each of these figures, we just have another repaint of the Savage Strike uh, Sticky Mullet. Finally, it has a new paint scheme. Usually we always just get a repaint of the same, and not even a repaint, just like, or either a re-release or a new mold or action gimmick of the same Sticky Mullet with the same paint job. So finally we get a new one. It's not that different, but at least it's new. We get a new, uh, version of Echo. I can't remember which one was Echo. I think Echo was the, was the crouching toy, uh, at least in, in the Mattel toy wise, which I hated. So I'm super excited that they gave him or gave her a new one. I'm not sure if it's the same one. I know both Raptors because they've, they've done Charlie again. So it's just up to Delta and Echo now. And uh, I'm pretty sure Echo was the one that has the action figure I don't like at all, where it's the crouching Raptor one. So I'm happy to get a new version of it. Regardless, I'm happy to get this one. So this one's nice. Scudosaurus is another one that was from the Kenner line that well, I think is in the Kenner line. I, I, I'll have to check. I'll go ahead and put a little message to let you know if this was in the Kenner line or not. So for the last one, we have Styracosaurus. Again, just as a repaint, but I love getting herbivores because they love making big old herds in my movies and my pictures. So I'm always happy to get new herbivores. So these two are solids for me. I don't think I'm gonna need to buy any more of them. 
they're not that appealing, but I'm always happy to get them, period. So let's go ahead and get these out of the box because there's nothing really interesting about them other than the little Japanese stickers on them. So yeah, I mean, the last review was way too long. So let's get this over with, am I right? All right, so here we have them all out of the packaging. Um, we have a nice uh, var variety going on here. Uh, usually I'm not really impressed with the Savage Strikes, so at least up until now. It, it's been a lot of retooling of old dinosaurs we've already, we've already gotten. Now of course all the new species I'm happy for, I'm happy for new species regardless. But again, this is really just one new species in this entire assortment, which is the Scutosaurus. But I'm not going to complain about that because I, I li I'll like a repaint if it's a good repaint. And this is mostly solid for the most point. Uh, Styracosaurus has a bit of an odd one going on here. But seeing as it has bright colors on the crest, I'll forgive it because that's believable. Uh, Delta, I mean, or Echo, is a name drafter, so her design is already decided, so that's fine. And the uh, Sticky Moloch, while not super uh, unique, is different enough to where I can say, okay, well, this maybe might be a male Sticky Moloch or the female or whatever, you know? So I, I'm down with this whole line. Of course, Postosuchus I got because I wanted the variant and the other Echo just came in the box. So starting off, we're gonna start with Scutosaurus because this one is the new one and is the most interesting out of the lot. So answering our question earlier, yes, there has been a Kenner Scutosaurus. Um, this one looks much better, I must say, because the, the, the overall detailing, at least for the, uh, would you call those osteoderms? Those horns sticking out of the back of its, or the bottom of its throat. I don't know what you would call those, um, but we're just gonna call them little spikes for now. There's more of them, more well defined, closer to the fossil record. So I'm always happy when, when, when Mattel goes back and does dinosaurs that Kenner already did, because it's kind of like a throwback. Interestingly enough, they didn't give it the same paint scheme, which I kind of would have preferred. This one's nice and all, but I feel like the Kenner throwback would have really, uh, just on a personal basis, I would have preferred it more. But this isn't bad. This is pretty tame for, you know, a lot of the paint schemes that Mattel comes up with. So I'm happy. You know, it doesn't have the super superb detail like the paint on the on the claws that Kenner's did, but that's pretty common with this line. So, but, I mean, but taking a look at it, you can just tell this is super well sculpted. I mean, look at all the bumps and the crevices and all the little uh, osteoderms on the back. Uh, a lot of these uh, Mattel toys, while looking good and acceptable out of the box, uh, really benefit from a custom paint job. That's where their sculpt really is you know, brought out all the little details and it really makes these shine and can elevate these from what would be, you know, cheap, cool dinosaur toys to really like displayable models. So, and that's the same thing going on here. Sadly, there is no poseability in the jaw, which is kind of sad. I really uh, would have preferred that for a, a dinosaur like this. I'm not actually sure, is, is this dinosaur a, a herbivore or is it is a, is a um, carnivore? Not entirely sure, like uh, I'm not super knowledgeable, and by super knowledgeable I mean I don't know anything about Scutosaurus or a lot of pre-dinosaur, uh, prehistoric creatures. But action figure wise, pretty solid. Um, it's action gimmick is its head will look from left to right. So nothing too crazy, you can see is it, is it you know, whoosh, whoosh, attacking with those um, chin horns. So that's pretty awesome. I like that they included an action feature that relates to its actual natural defense instead of just giving it a, a generic, you know, something. I don't know. A lot of these Mattel action gimmicks don't really make sense sometimes. But this one does. This whole figure makes sense. There's its little tag. So yeah, uh, scaling wise, we're gonna go ahead over that at the end, like we did with the other review, because we have uh, three other dinosaurs to look at. We're gonna go ahead and go over the scaling for all of them at the end. So moving on to Velociraptor Echo. So here is our latest incarnation of Echo. And while 
yes, uh, comparisons are being halted until the end. I kind of have to show the new and the old Echo just so you guys can get an understanding of how much of an improvement this figure is just because of the mold itself. So here we have both of Mattel's release of Velociraptor Echo. And as you can see, like I said, the old Echo is in this really bad, I'm sorry guys, I'm not gonna, I, I love this Mattel line, but I'm gonna say this figure is utter garbage. Garbage. This whole Raptor mold, this specific Raptor mold is garbage in my opinion. I really don't like it, but they keep using it. They just keep using it. Like in their most recent legacy pack. I don't know why, it's so bad. Just make a new mold, please, a, a neutral mold. I don't want my Raptor current constantly peeping in on someone like a creep. I mean, it's nice to have the, the, the articulation, but you can easily make a pose similar to this with the uh, battle damage one. Just put the articulation there to make it like that. These pre-posed ones, they usually end up peg warmers. And that's exactly what Echo is. And now they went back and they redid this Raptor in a much better sculpt. Paint, I don't know why it's so much more different. I feel like this is more accurate, but I don't know because I can't really tell the Raptors in the actual movies apart that well. So I'll just post a little comparison picture at the end. So I'll let you guys decide. But this is just another repaint of the jumping Raptor mold. So it has that action gimmick where you can make it leap and it doesn't work very well. Oh, that one landed on its feet. That was pretty dope. Yeah, well, I think it's a cool action gimmick. Other people may not like it, but I like it a lot. Uh, really glossy toes for some reason. Dang, just got that from the pedicure, bro. Look how much those, look how much gloss is on those compared to like uh, the uh, Amber collection. Interesting. So, there's no real reason in like uh, going over all the articulation because I've I've reviewed this type of raptor before. You know, you have the neck, up and down movement, twists around. This one's still limited because the legs are locked due to the action gimmick, which I don't like at all. I hate when you sacrifice articulation for a lame little gimmick. Uh, I feel like the gimmick should add articulation, if anything, like with the Rexes, how it adds the neck articulation. Here, they sacrificed it for the gimmick, but that's uh, old news because, of course, this is, a, this is like from the beginning of the line. So there's no point in really complaining about it. The paint on this one's really good, at least in the eyes. The eyes are spot on. There's no like leaking or, or, or mess ups and that's pretty weird. So you have to point that out, but you know, paint at paint. QC issues are kind of common in this line. So I'm lucky to get a good one here. So yeah, I mean, another solid new addition. Uh, I feel like even if it's not more accurate to, to actual Echo, it's more interesting than this one. Tyracosaurus, another figure I have, of course, reviewed before. But now we have this really nice bluish gray color scheme that kind of goes white around the uh, ed edges. I really like it. It almost feels like maybe a, an Arctic uh, variant, which is kind of weird, but I like it. It's it's not, you know, too super crazy. Uh, you have this nice kind of orangish reddish color going up on the, on the, on the front of the back here and then it doesn't even really transition it just changes into this much more orange color that is brighter in fact up here on the head crest now I am completely accept accepting of this because it's very uh, openly accepted that a lot of these uh, animals would have these nice display colors on their on their features to attract mates so I like it I think it's cool and I think it'll look really good next to my other two regular release uh, sources. And I'll go, and like I said, I'll compare them at the end. But for now, uh, you know, standard articulation. And the limbs move out. Mine's stiff because it's new, but the limbs do move out. Move in. And uh, its action gimmick, of course, is the... Mine's kind of uh, stiff. Yeah, mine's kind of weak. 
that's the action gimmick, it rams its horn. So another good one. Cool. So, only one more to take a look at. Introducing, mm, is it the third? I wanna say the third most pushed dinosaur by Mattel. Right next to Blue and Rexy. The Sticky Molek has had its fair share of action figures and it's finally back with a new paint scheme. Finally, a new paint scheme. It's always been the same. It's been the movie Sticky Molek. So I'm happy to get a new variant. While it's not super different, it is still in the realms of believability. So that's good. And it's close to the original, which means if you want, you can make it a believable male and female pair because of uh, if you want to have like the gender dis is it like the um i can't remember the word for it. it's gender something where the male and the male and female have different features that tell them apart i i i want to say differentiation gen gender differentiation but i'm probably wrong post it down in the comments i'm sure one of you guys know uh so there's that option for you guys which is i what i always do uh it's action gimmick of course is the uh, head Weirdly enough, I, I, I'm sure on the original one, when you move the head back, it would pop back in, kind of like a ramming attack. Um, I'll have to check. Nope, I was wrong. They both do this, which is kind of weird. I feel like uh, when, you, when, you, when you pull this action lever down, which is what triggers it, uh, when, you, when you get to the end, it should pop back out, kind of like it's ramming its head, because that's kind of lame. But, again, it's repay, no point in complaining about it, no figure. So, like I said, articulation is the same as it would be on the old Sticky Molek. You can see the arms move out about that much. And we can go around 360 degrees. And, uh, yeah, the eye is a little strange on this one because they, it's like, uh, if you've seen those old Hanna-Barbera cartoons, Get him standing first of all, because this one never had good standing. It's another one of those. Uh, if you see those old Hanna Barbera, Hanna Barbera cartoons where it's like they don't paint the, the eye, they just paint the pupil, that's how it is on this one. It's just a little black dot, so it can easily get uh, lost in the rest of the paint scheme because it's not like it stands out that well. And then moving down to the body, pretty standard detail. This is my least favorite of the Sticky Mullock figures because its proportions are just weird and it's just built weird due to the action gimmick. I much prefer the battle damage, but that goes for most of dinosaurs that have a battle damage version. I usually prefer that one because those usually have more articulation, uh, more standard posing, you know. And that's not always true. Not even the battle damage lion could save the Pachycephalosaurus figure. I'm sorry, Mattel, but you guys screwed over that dinosaur so bad. He needs a new figure and it needs to be better. You guys owe the Pachy more than that, come on. But this one's good. Not great, but good. So let's get on to scaling. We already know how these guys fit in with the rest of the Mattel line, but let's do it anyway. So, starting us off with the Scrutosaurus. Here we have it, it compares generally into the Mattel line. Nothing really to say here, you guys already know. Here's how it is with the uh, Control and Conquer Carnotaurus. And the Legacy or Extreme Jumping T-Rex. And then of course, a standard Mattel human. Next up, we got Sticky Mullet, and as you can see, here it is with the uh, original Sticky Mullet. Now, there's no point in showing the other figures of Sticky Mullet because they all have this paint scheme. But like I said, as you can see, they are similar enough where they could be like a male and a female pair. Uh, here it is with a standard Mattel human. We already know because this one right here came with a repaint of the Wheatley figure, so we already know how these two scale in, and then. It with the rest of the line like I said there's no real point in doing these comparisons just mainly for the new guys here because we already know how big these repaints are so let's get on to Styracosaurus and here we have the Styracosaurus compared with the other figures in the Mattel line mainly the human right here like I said no real point in comparison because these are old repainted figures so we already know how big they are here are the old the two 
the resources we've gotten together so you can see other paint schemes compare up. I feel like this one, at least on the head, is a little more complex going on than this one, but this one has the better body. Um, not so much this one. This one's okay. I actually think I prefer this one, uh, honestly, because of the head crest alone. This one's a good repaint, but I still think the, I prefer the original. So, that aside, comparing him or her to the Edmontosaurus and the Stegosaurus. Like I said, these are just random dinosaurs that I, I find, I think most people have that I can compare it to that are herbivores. So, finally, let's get on with Echo. And since we've already covered uh, the raptor mold that, that uh, uh, Echo is in, there's no real point. I've already showed you all the raptors are the same general size. So instead I opted to show you guys the full current raptor pack with each raptor having their most recent iteration involved. Or at least with blue, the most impressive because there have been more blue since, but I'm not buying another blue. The uh, damage, the battle damage one is the definitive blue for me. So here's how the new squad looks. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty solid. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the video, guys. Not much else to say. Uh, like I said, movie does drop this Friday. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Toy Adventures, and I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be the movie. There won't be another review. The next thing I upload will be a movie. So stay tuned, guys. Wheatley's about to have a very bad day.